Welcome back to our connoisseurs. There is without a doubt a great degree of experimentation within the vineyards of Champagne, particularly amongst the grower Champenois. And as I've been visiting the cellars and maisons over the last couple of years, something beautiful, curvaceous and aesthetic has been courting my eyes as I've been venturing into the cellars. Pretty egg-shaped vessels made of concrete, clay or amphora. There are many, many differences, many, many subtleties between our producers and indeed a lot of differences between each and every cuvee in Champagne. And the more you research, as I do, the larger these differences appear to be. The winemaker in Champagne has a number of tools and methodologies available to him or to her to influence his wine. And one of the big ones is the vessel in which the wine is fermented, primary fermentation and subsequently aged. In early Champagne history, it was only the oak barrel that was present in the process of fermentation in Champagne. Then in the 1960s, winemaking in the area was revolutionised with the introduction of stainless steel tanks, almost entirely eradicating the use of oak barrels, with notable exception of a handful of producers who never lost faith in the barrel. But once again, Times are changing and I am hearing more and more winemakers re are rejigging their cellars to accommodate the arrival of concrete eggs, which are being used for primary fermentation and for aging. So this month, we're gonna dive into the influence of these eggs, commonly called amphora. Concrete vats have been used by large commercial vineyards producing still wine since about the 1920s. But this appealing egg shape is quite new, particularly new to the Champagne region. It's said that Michael Chaputier, in collaboration with French producer Noble, Noble who have been making these concrete vats uh, since the 1920s, are actually behind the birth of this beautiful new egg shaped vessel. And it's gaining popularity. But what is it about this shape and about this material that is becoming popular? Well, there are quite a few upsides to the egg. Firstly, the thick walls of the vessel provide a natural insulation for the wine. The temperature of the wine inside is controlled more naturally as a result during the fermentation, eliminating the need for artificial regulation and refrigeration. Interestingly, the round shape of the egg, so with no hard corners and hard lines, allows for continuum continuous movement or flow of the wine as it ferments and subsequently ages, which has benefit. The concrete is slightly porous, allowing the wine to breathe, just like it would with oak, but it's minimising the reductive qualities and characters in the champagne, which can be visible on purely stainless steel fermentation cuvées. The concrete can breathe, however it imparts no flavour like a wine can when it's aged in oak barrel. So there's plenty of upside there. It's also said by winemakers in Champagne that wines coming from the concrete egg have a more expressive aroma. They have more lifted floral notes, more fruit forward. And experimentations of exactly the same plot of grapes from tank to barrel to amphora concrete egg, egg have a slightly different character on the nose but also on the palate. So not only do we have an elevated aroma on the Van Clare, we also have a more textural mouth feel as a result of fermenting and aging in these vessels. This is supremely important in wine. I speak to winemakers in Champagne who've blended their cuvées almost solely on mouth feel and dimension compared to the aroma of the wine. So the downside of the vessel, well, the downside is that it's expensive. It's also heavy. It can be difficult to clean. This is another problem for, for the egg. And this raises some issues around hygiene and also bacteria issues. But despite the downsides, more and more winemakers are moving to experimentation with concrete eggs, clay and amphora. Now, the two fabulous wines that we feature this month in your delivery, deliveries are from producers who proactively deploy concrete eggs or amphora in their winemaking processes. Our first Maison is Henri Giraud. In my opinion, Henri Giraud is a leader in the Champagne region and they are a five-star producer. The family have owned prime land in Champagne for 12 generations, with the origins in Champagne dating back to the 1600s. Claude Giraud and his children are exciting producers and in my opinion, every cuvee in the range is a knockout. 
Located in the Grand Cru village of Ai, they are in the heart of the Pinot Noir country. And as such, this bold red fruit takes the lead in most of their wines. Giro have always been associated with oak and are one of the few, in addition to Krug, who religiously conducted primary fermentation in oak barrels, adding recognisable depth to their wines. But now I feel the Maison may very soon be known for applying the application of amphora and really pioneering the use of amphora. The wine we feature this month is Dame Jeanne, Dame Jane Rosé. This cuvee is hot out of the vineyard and just landed on Australian soil, just landed on Australian soil. I met with this, uh, I first met with this wine in June last year in the vineyard and I couldn't wait to show it to my clients and to club members. Super unique packaging, beautiful bottles. This is also an attribute of the house across the entire range, this sleek bottle shape and fabulous labellings. The base of the wine is homage, so 70% Pinot Noir and 30% Chardonnay. It's been aged six months on its lees in stainless steel, followed by six months of ageing in oak barrel, a sourced from the Argonne Forest. This homage base is then blended with a light 6% red wine made from Pinot Noir sourced from 70-year-old vines. This red wine is then aged, fermented in an amphora egg. So why the name Dame Jane, Dame Dom Jean? The red wine for the rosé is made in an amphora demijohn. Now, let me talk about this word demijohn for a moment. A demijohn is an old word refer referring to any glass vessel with a large body and a small neck and in historical purposes was used for transportation of liquid. Now this could have been oil, it could have been wine, it could have been water. Some scholars say that the word uh, demijohn might have arrived from Persia, very close to Damagan. But in fact, the Oxford Dictionary states that demijohn stems from a French word meaning Dame Jane or Lady Jane or Dame Jeanne. And this is referring to the shape of the amphora vessel and hence the name of the wine. The Dame Jeanne Rosé, wow, okay. I'm in my happy place with this wine. In fact, I'm supremely impressed with both cuvées in this month's deliveries. The, ro the aroma on this wine at first is tropical citrus bomb. So very lifted, very defined, very aromatic, tangerine, blood orange, grapefruit. It's fresh, it's lively and exotic. But on the palate, it's savoury and it's creamy. Take note when you're drinking this champagne of a very striking orange bitters aftertaste on the palate. I love this champagne. It immediately makes me want to cook a duck a l'orange and sit down to a hearty meal. Incredibly versatile food wine is the Dame Jeanne Rosé. The second producer for this month is Chaton Taillet. This family, like the Giro family, have a really long story in the region of Champagne. And Fierke Taillet began making wine in the region long before the region even converted uh, to sparkling wine in 1485. Located in a little town called Murphy, which is just slightly northeast of Reims. The Taille family have been tending to the vines of Champagne for generations, and they even turned their hands to the famous sparkling wines of the Champagne region in its early days. Alexandre Chaton is the current heir of the Maison and has been in charge of production since 2006. The wine that we're featuring from the Chaton Taille range this month is Eut Bisset. The wine is Blanc de Blanc, 100% Chardonnay, and interestingly, it is a single vintage. It's not declared as a vintage, but it is 100% from 2010. It has a very light dosage of 5.5 grams of sugar. The dosage will change in this cuvee every year, in fact, across all of Alexandre's cuvees, which I like. You know, sometimes I get a little nervous when I hear a winemaker say that the dosage is exactly the same every year, despite being differences in the vineyard. I feature this really interesting producer as when you are in the production facilities of Chateau Taille, you will see a number of vessels being used for primary fermentation and aging. You see stainless steel tanks, you see oak barrels, and you see the cement vats, which is the vessel that's being used for Eut Bizet. The wine is a standout. The wine is actually 
loaded with minerality, with waves of lemon and citrus freshness. There's depth, volume and richness of the wine in the palate, but in the mouth, the wine does something really interesting. The acidity on the wine is racy. It almost dances on the tongue, it's spritzy. It has a super fine bead, which makes the cuvee really creamy in the mouth and it has real horsepower, great length and drive. It is a beautiful cuvee, you'll be supremely impressed. We hope you enjoyed both club wines this month. I certainly enjoyed both club wines this month. It's great to do this research to find these interesting producers that have these characters and nuances. There's definitely more change in champagne now than there has been in the last hundred years and it's really exciting for the champagne consumer. We're seeing winemakers in Champagne look globally at what other winemakers are doing in different regions and they're now ad adopting new methodologies. Now, this is never going to be big quantities. Due to the size of the vessel, particularly talking about amphora and how hands-on the management needs to be, these are going to be very, very low output. But it is extremely exciting for us connoisseurs who seek out these wines. I am actually heading off to Champagne next month to find more interesting producers and cuvées for you to enjoy within the club. But for now, please keep exploring the region of Champagne and I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now.